Hi everyone. It's a beautiful mid-December day here in sunny Southern California. We're in zone 10B. In today's video, I'm going to harvest some vegetables in our winter garden, do some chores, as well as take you on a tour to show you what's growing in the garden. Please stay tuned. In these pots, I have snow peas growing up this trellis. This variety is called Royal Snow. Pick these up at the garden center. And what's interesting about these peas is that they are purple in color. Take a look at that, so interesting. So we're gonna go ahead and harvest some of these peas. In these pots, I have Brussels sprouts, one, two, and uh, three plants. I want you to notice that on this plant, there's been damage to these leaves. This happened early on. This pot, as well as the other two, were protected when I transplanted the seedlings into these pots with these wire cages. But, a white cabbage butterfly must have found an opportunity when I had the cage off to lay its eggs. And it's those uh, caterpillars in the larval stage that cause all the damage. We found some poop on the plant, so uh, they found an opportunity when I had them uncovered to lay its eggs. Now these, fortunately, uh, were not affected. So let me show you what these cages are all about. Here you see three different sizes of cages that I made to fit the different pots to protect the plants. In order to make these, the material that I'm using is this quarter inch wire mesh fabric cloth. Very strong, of course, it's made out of wire. It's gonna prevent those white cabbage moths from getting through, as well as other rodents such as squirrels and rats. The only thing that they won't protect against are slugs. So, you know, this is uh, going to protect you from most of the pests, but not all. It's been very, very effective. So let me show you how they're made. All right, let's take a look at this wire cage. In order to make this, you'll need two measurements to get started. You'll need the measurement of the circumference. That would be the measurement around your pot. And you'll also need the measurement of the height that you want the cage to be. That would be from bottom to top. Once you have those two numbers, write them down on a piece of paper, then roll out your quarter inch uh, wire mesh fabric cloth and then cut it to those dimensions. Once you have it cut to those dimensions, then take that piece and roll it into this shape. Take the ends and connect them with these zip ties step would be to make the top. In order to make the top, I found the easiest way to do that is to take a big piece of cardboard that will fit over your pot and take a marker and basically trace the shape of that pot. Once you have that, then cut the cardboard out and then lay the cardboard on top of your wire mesh fabric cloth. Take your cutters and just follow the pattern around the um, cardboard and then you'll have your top that you can then attach with the zip ties. This is a dwarf pak choy that I sewed way back in September. Uh, this is from Kitazawa Seed Company. It's a dwarf pak choy called Chakushima. And we've been harvesting it, as you can see, we've been picking off the leaves and using them in various dishes. I also have some more down here, interplanted uh, within this Swiss shard. Here I have turnips coming up nicely. It's called Tokyo Cross. I'll show you some more mature ones on the other side. These are Lacinato kale and they're developing nicely. Coming across to this side, this is a watermelon radish.
beets are doing very nicely. This is the popular Detroit dark red. Here we have green onions from cuttings. As you can see, we cut them all the way down to the bottom. They're coming right back. So you can go several generations and not have to grow green onions. More kale. This is daikon radish. And I have the wire around open so that the leaves are trained upward. Here I have more beets. These are golden boy beets. And more daikon in that grow bag. And here I have carrots. So I grew these in succession. Let's go ahead and harvest some of these. Okay, let's go ahead and feel around in here. I think this one might be okay. Still on the small side, but that's okay. We can have these as snacks. Okay, should be good enough for snacks. Looking good. This pot next to the carrots are turnips. This variety is called Tokyo Cross. And this is the same seed that I have growing on the other side of the garden. You can see the turnips forming here. They're looking really good. Lots of greens that can be harvested uh, and prepared to eat. But I'm really looking forward to these turnips because I will pickle them. Next to the turnips I have garlic. Growing this for the first time. Very easy. I took some of the cloves and I planted them and mulched it. So these are looking really good. And next to the garlic is this spinach that is just growing like crazy. I picked this up at the garden center. It is called Corvair. Nice big leaves. I've already harvested this two other times and it's yielded lots and lots of leaves. Let's go ahead and pick some of this. Here I have two grow bags of sweet potatoes. I started these from slips. I did harvest one already and I'll harvest the next one here in the coming weeks. On the back table, I have parsley. Ginger made some fabulous chimichurri sauce with some of the parsley in one of the other pots. Mint, more parsley, basil that Ginger will be making pesto from. Down here I have chives. These are great in eggs. More green onions, and you can tell again, they've been cut all the way down to the bottom and they're coming right back. And here we have thyme. So there you have it. This is our December vegetable garden. Let's take a look at what we harvested today. Carrots, these really interesting purple snow peas and this large leaf Corvair spinach. Thank you for coming along on this tour with us. We really appreciate it. Please consider taking a look at the links in the description for related videos of this garden. And please consider subscribing to our channel. We would really appreciate your support. And as always, thank you so much for watching.